Listen, Link. Can I ask you one last selfish favor? Regardless of what my reasons may have been, I once abandoned this world. I left behind the Twilly, those who had followed me, who considered me their ruler. Even now, as they remain here suffering, they believe help will come for this world. But if they were to see that the only help that they have for them is a hideous little imp, don't you think they'd feel let down? It's only for a little bit longer. Do you mind if I continue to hide in your shadow while you're still in human form? I'm sorry. Hey everyone, this is Hiro Tanamai 2011. Welcome back to more Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. We have another um, talk over here. Wait, this guy isn't an enemy, Link. They might look different, but they're inhabitants of this world. They're my people. Zant, how could he? Yeah, so, um, you know those shadow beasts that we were, um, encountering throughout the entire game? Uh, whoa, close up here. Um, yeah. It turns out some of them were actually the inhabitants of the Twilly that were transformed from Zant. Zant was, um, transforming the people from their own free will and making them attack us. So, yeah. Welcome, guys, to the Palace of Twilight. In last episode, we found out that Minna is actually the ruler of Twilight. She is the Twilight Princess, the... You know, the quote-unquote title drop, pretty much. In this episode, we are tackling the Palace of Twilight, which, honestly, yeah, I know that the whole point of this area is that it's supposed to basically be a dungeon, and, you know, I'll admit the Palace of Twilight itself is climactic. I'm a bit disappointed that I didn't pull off, a, um, you know, A Link to the Past, where the Twilight Realm was, like, a dark realm, where, like, yeah, throughout the entire game, we have been pretty much going on through the, um, like, you know, when areas became covered in Twilight and everything, technically we were going through their world. But I kind of wish that we could go through, like, you know, like a full, like, Twilight world. I kind of don't like the fact that the only bit of the Twilight world that we, we see is, you know, the Palace of Twilight. Because I really doubt that, you know, the Palace of Twilight itself is just, um, is just, you know, this area. I, I really do think it's bigger than that. And, you know, like I said before multiple times, all the dungeons here are post-commentary, so this area is no exception. I really like the Palace of Twilight design-wise, too. It's just, this is the one... Well, this and the next area are the... Fail. This and the next area are the two areas in the game where I mentioned before, I kind of don't like the dungeon music in this game. I don't mind the music in uh, Palace of Twilight and the music in uh, the next dungeon. Well, the last dungeon, I mean. Because, well, it's ambient. I really do like the music here just because it really does fit the mood of, you know, this place is a different world, but something's wrong. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we get to the next dungeon. Anyway, this thing coming up right here... Link, be careful. This black fog is made out of those shadow crystals created by Zant. They blot out the light. He's responsible for stealing the light from the spirits and turning your world into twilight. But he's not all-powerful. We're prepared, too. I can return you to your normal state whenever you need me, okay? Yeah, so, um, remember the Shadow Crystals that forced us to be a wolf until we got the Master Sword? Guess what we're in. We're basically in a giant swarm of it. Whenever you're in this giant black cloud of uh, the Shadow Crystals, I'm just going to call it a Shadow Cloud, pretty much, you're forced into your wolf form no matter where you are, and you cannot transfer, um, transfer, transform out of this until you leave this cloud because... The darkness is so strong, it would physically crush Link. Yeah. So, basically, you're forced into a wolf form whenever you're in this area. And, oh uh, yeah, another thing this dungeon likes to do, which honestly I don't like, is that they drop enemies on you without moment's notice. And that kind of bothers me about this area. But, we got the compass. Yeah, we're getting a lot of the dungeon items out of order. But, um... For this and the next area, for some reason, and yeah, by the way, I didn't even go in it. I just touched it. That's how strong the darkness is. Zan should really be in Kingdom Hearts or something. But um, speaking of Kingdom Hearts, I hope you guys are liking the music I placed here. I thought the uh, world that never was would be suitable for this area. But um, in any case, and there goes my watch, I think. In any case, um, over here, I actually spliced in um, me getting something because... The treasure chest that's up here, I believe it's a piece of heart. And for the life of me, I actually forgot to go get this because I didn't know how to get up here. So you're seeing me go back to this, um, this footage right now is me going back to this area 
um, after I collected the item we get from here, just to get this treasure chest, because for the life of me, I did not know how to get up here, and I kind of feel stupid for missing it, because I do get every treasure chest in this area for the most part. Most of it's just rupees. Uh, let's see what this treasure chest is. Oh, it was an orange rupee. Yeah, so I, I went back for nothing, but, you know, I still had to splice this in because I wouldn't feel right just leaving that treasure chest. But now we're back to, you know, the life footage. So just ignore that treasure chest there because we already got it. You already see what's in it. Uh, no blue rupee, unfortunately, just because um, this is the same recording session that I did the last one. By the way, you're going to notice a lot of loading doors as we're going through this area because we have two mini boss fights. Yeah, and... I guess this area was so graphically detailed that we needed multiple loading zones because there's essentially no lag in this area, which is really impressive. Like, this is one of the areas that, like, just shows off how powerful the GameCube was. This is Phantom Zant. Yeah, sounds familiar, right? Sounds very similar to Phantom Ganon. He's also using Death Sword's music for some reason. Phantom Zant's gimmick. He's going to continuously teleport away from you until he teleports to a specific area of the map. Even if you do get up to him, you can't do damage until he solidifies himself. And it's kind of obnoxious because frequently, like right here, he will constantly try to summon that giant ball while you're not near him. And if he gets away with that, he will basically summon a bunch of monsters to make your day a bad time. Unfortunately for me, in this setup, he summoned a bunch of Deku Babas, and this is one of the most annoying things he can do for you, because they literally stay on the board until the next time that he summons another giant magic ball. But yeah, sometimes they'll also taunt you by not doing anything and just waiting, pretty much. But you have to make sure you get in a good four hits, because if not, he's going to teleport away from you again. And, yeah, you see there, too, you have to wait for him to solidify yourself. Otherwise, um, he's not going to, um, you're not going to hurt him. I don't like this fight. And, frankly, this is not the only time we're going to be doing this fight. You'll see what I mean later. But, yeah, now that we're done with that... He leaves a giant cloud of darkness, the dick, and we have to go to this thing over here. That shining spear illuminates this world. It's called a soul. Is it the soul emerald? Are we going to get burning blaze? The power of the soul is the source of life in this world. It's pure power. Ah, as long as you have this. Did it take the soul from the Twilly to the entrance to the world link? Please. I, I totally botched that, but yeah. Like Mina said, the soul is basically a sort of light, uh, the source of light in this world. But the moment we take it away, we have this thing. Remember Floor Masters and Wall Masters? Yeah, meet this game's incarnation of it. Not as creepy because it's not a, dis, dis, um, a dismembered hand like Ocarina of Time, but still kind of terrifying in its own right, especially because um, the closer it gets to um, the soul, or the soul emerald as I joked before, it makes that noise, the doo-doo, doo-doo, doo-doo. However, it's not invincible. Well, it kind of is. You can stop it by continuously shooting three arrows at it, but it will come back after a while. And also, it's kind of creepy too because it has like disproportioned fingers and all that. Fun fact, um, both Midna and Zant use um, Floor Masters from their world um, when, uh, when you use them in uh, Higher Warriors. And also the soul. Interestingly enough, even though it's a light attribute um, ability, which, by the way, yeah, another thing this game, well, not this game, this dungeon does is that it leaves enemies inside the darkness and they don't reveal themselves till you get rid of the darkness, which, frankly, I find cheap. But, um, yeah, numerous times you're going to have to um, bring the soul around and um, use the soul as a puzzle. And just be careful, because if this thing grabs the soul, you can rescue the soul, but um, you got to get it before it leaves otherwise you're gonna have to do the puzzle again at least it doesn't warp you out of the dungeon like last time but yeah you do have some like super monkey ball physics stuff over here and i just say screw it and just use my claw shot for this which is claw shot's really helpful in this one by the way um 
even though it doesn't work like the other floor masters where it will take you back to the beginning of the dungeon, it can hurt Link, so be careful. Also, this thing gets really uncomfortably close, so, ha, huh, that's not the first time that's going to happen in this dungeon. But, um, yeah, that's me noticing I missed a treasure chest, but don't worry, we already got it um, in terms of this. You're going to want to keep the soul around, though, because, as you notice, it clears the darkness um, around the area, and... I'm going to be using it for one of those items over here because there are dark waterfalls all around the Palace of Twilight, and the only way to get around them is to carry a soul. So just, you're going to want to use this, but also being cautious of the, uh, the Wallmaster. Um, I believe this is the piece of heart. I'm sorry I keep saying, oh, this is the piece of heart, this is the piece of heart. I think this thing actually is the piece of heart. Yeah, it is. Okay, my bad. I was going to call myself a liar again. Um, be careful too because it does not matter where you have the soul the wall master will always follow you so be careful so like even if you're in that tiny crevice that I was in where the um you know the uh, the piece of heart was the wall master will still follow you so be careful about that but the first section of this area is already done pretty much I'm just checking these areas to make sure there's nothing um, nothing of importance and Spoiler, there isn't, but, uh, you know, it never hurts to check. So, ow, dick. So, um, a little thing about Zant. Yeah, you said, you know how I said before how I don't like Phantom Zant, mostly just because it's a really annoying boss? Um, you may be wondering, that sounds very similar to Phantom Ganon. Yeah, we're going to find out about that at the end of this. But we were able to take the soul out of the first part of this dungeon, so... Let's see what effect it has on the people of Twilight. It instantly transforms them back, and they make that really weird moaning sound. But, um, why don't we revive some of them first, and then place them in the middle of this, uh, pedestal? Well, as soon as we're done by this. Uh, it seems that the people of Twilight are naturally tall, also. That's kind of interesting to say. You know, one thing that sucks, too, is that I guess maybe Minna or whatever is, um, well, hold on, because I think she has something else to say here. Sure enough. Link, there should be one more soul. If we can find that, it should lead us to Zant. Yeah, so I cut back here because, you know, I went back and I got the treasure chest. But, um, you know, one thing I find kind of weird about this area is that... You know, the people of Twilight, I kind of wish they had stuff to say to you, like maybe thank you or something. I kind of find it weird how they just moan at you. Like, I know, like, they're grateful that you returned them back to how they were, but at the same time, it's like, really? They don't have anything to say, or do they just not speak our language? Because I guess Minna being the Twilight Princess makes sense, and, you know, Zant being um, the, you know, usurper king, he should... Uh, know how to speak, like, human language. It's just... Yeah, like, why don't the, um... The people of Twilight... Like, do they not know how to speak English? Or just, you know, do they kind of don't have anything to say to us? Or, like, they just are mute because they just return back to normal? I'm not sure. But, um... You may have noticed also in this dungeon, another gimmick that we have to do is that we have to take down the Zant heads. Yeah, those are also something that Zant uses in the attacks on Hyrule Warriors. And by the way, Zant's really a really weird character to use in Hyrule Warriors. I like using him, it's just... Uh, I'm more of a damage-dealing guy, and Zant's a combo-heavy uh, character, so... I'm not sure. By the way, the Soul is actually Midna's um, ultimate weapon in Hyrule Warriors also. And what's really weird about the Soul, too, is that... Uh, yeah, by the way, the shield attack can actually bounce back um, Zant's projectiles, but... Uh, this, that's the only time I'm able to do it, actually, because the other times I actually mess up and, um, he's able to hit me. But, uh, yeah, for some really, really odd reason, in Hyrule Warriors, even though Midna's ultimate weapon is the soul, it still counts as a darkness attribute, and I don't understand why. Is it just because she herself is dark? Uh, well, whatever, but, yeah, in any case, something interesting, too, is that, um... Well, I don't want to spoil it, but there's a second Midna in um, Hyrule Warriors. And her it's interesting because because she's the Twilight Princess, her attribute is light and darkness. So she's essentially one of the most broken characters in the game because of that. 
And um, over here, I'm checking to see if um, there's any way to get these treasures. Spoiler, there's not. At least not yet, because this one, I didn't bother splicing it in because you actually can't get to these treasures until you get, come back with um, the uh, the dungeon item of this game, which the dungeon item the, of uh, the dungeon item of this dungeon isn't exactly special. It's kind of a one-use thing, really. Like. You know all these um, items that we've been getting in the game where I said, like, you know, after this point on, it's basically worthless? Yeah, after this dungeon, the dungeon item we get is essentially worthless. But over here, we have a um, another dark cloud thing, and whoa, these things. By the way, yeah, even though you're inside, um, you know, the Twilight Realm, you still have to kill these things all in one go. So if you don't, they're going to scream at you like this. Or not. Oh, okay, I got them both in one go. Okay, I, I'm, excuse me, I'm thinking about later, because I'm, you know, I edited this footage first, and then I'm commentating over it, so I legitimately, like, forgot about that. In any case, um, we have to get rid of all these ant heads, which, by the way, yeah, if you do, um, you know, the force field on them, they go down in one hit, and I've been trying to get all three of them all at once, but they keep hitting me. Oh, that one just teleports away, sure, you dick. So, oh, hey! So, um, by the way, um, I'm recording this on New Year's Eve, and as of this point on, um, all the episodes of Twilight Princess are already recorded. I already recorded the finale. The only thing I have to do is record the bonus footage, which I'm gonna do post-commentary on that, too, so I apologize for all of you who are just, like, enough with the post-commentary for this LP. But another thing I gotta apologize for, too, is that the final battle of this LP... I actually had to end up getting footage for that, because my footage corrupted... So, and I tried my hardest to re-record it, but my Y-Splitters were absolutely not responding with me at all during this. So, yeah, I kind of had no choice but to do that, and I apologize in advance for that. So, like, if you see any footage that looks really weird or uh, drastic shift in quality, it's because I had to use um, found footage for that. So, there's a bunch of um, treasure chests around here, which I think... Oh, wait, yo, I'm wrong. Huh, excuse me for yawning. I'm gonna kick my own ass for doing that. Um, the, yeah, the, um, there's a bunch of treasure chests over here, pretty much. And, um, well, all these spoilers are pretty much just rupees on the dungeon map, I think, because we already got, um, the piece of heart that's in this section, and the next section that the next piece of heart is, it's actually at the end of the dungeon. So, there's really no point in doing any of this. Um, actually, now that I think about it, why the hell did I keep this in? We're basically just wasting time. Um, yeah, so, since there's nothing but rupees in these treasure chests, well, what's in this one? Is it, like, a big rupee? Oh, no, we had to go over here. It's a small key. Um, so, yeah, since... <laughs> since I'm wasting time going over to this one, I'll just cut to when I get to the door. Oh, excuse me. No, this is the dungeon map. Yeah, um, <laughs> so I love how I said, okay, I'm going to cut away till, um, I'm going to cut away until we get to the, uh, the dungeon map, uh, the dungeon map. No, that was the dungeon map. So all, all my curse of skipping the dungeon map, not only was rectified, but I think intent subconsciously, I was like, no, it's the dungeon map. Skip it, skip it, skip it. Uh, don't worry though. We keep getting the dungeon map after this point on. But we have another living room, so guess what's up now? That's not a good sign. The moment we walk into this room, we already have, um... We already have the barrier spawn on the other side of the room. You can already put together what's coming up next. So, unlike the fight with Ook in um, the Forest Temple, there's no way to avoid these things spawning even if you skip the cutscene. So, yeah, this is the second annoying part of the fight. But I do like how in the cutscene before the starts, Link was already fully aware of uh, Phantom Zant's, well, bullshit, pretty much. 
So he outright just tried to attack Phantom Zant, which I, I, I like that. That Link wasn't just standing around like an idiot. He actually learned his lesson from looking at Phantom Zant the last time. But yeah, this fight is even more obnoxious. And frankly, it's cool that Phantom Zant is a color palette for Zant and Hyrule Warriors. But again, I, I don't like this boss fight. And, you know, it's going to make a lot of sense why there's a Phantom Zant. Because really, Zant at this point, he's been somewhat of an interesting villain. But now he's like really, really trying his hardest to rip off Ganondorf. It's like he's Kylo Ren or something. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not going to... Don't worry about... Don't worry. I'm not going to spoil Star Wars or anything. I hate people that did that, that tried doing that for me. But um, I just had to make the joke for anyone who's seen Star Wars and they already know about Kylo Ren's character. But... Oh, I thought that was it. Okay, yeah. No, we have to hit him one more time. Excuse me. But yeah, the, you already know the way this boss fight works. This boss is honestly kind of obnoxious, but... And now it's time. So another cloud of darkness spawns, and uh, the same song dances before, except this time, things get a little interesting. You see how there's no platform for the soul to stand on, and it's just um, a ramp? Let that be a sign of things to come, especially now that the Floor Master is starting to come after us already. Okay, so, um, you may be wondering why I'm not putting down the soul just yet. And, yeah, that's a real dick move, by the way, just putting a shadow... <laughs> just putting a shadow beast, um... A shadow beast, like, right after the goddamn, uh, thing lifts up. So, uh, something interesting is that... That circular area around where the soul is supposed to be placed, um, if you throw a soul and miss, it actually does gravitate towards the center. So that's something interesting to note about it. But I have to kill this uh, thing right away because that was a dumb move on my part. But um, yeah, the staircase isn't exactly um, the staircase isn't exactly straightforward. So let that be a sign of the next two rooms. The soul puzzle in this one, needless to say, is kind of obnoxious. So, with that being said, the way that this puzzle works is, if you remember the last room, there was a giant staircase that was created when we lifted up the darkness. There is no staircase in this one. In this one, it's a bunch of giant platforms. So once you put down the soul, you have to make sure you're standing on the right spot, otherwise your ass is not going anywhere. It is, well, the... Oh uh, yeah, and just spawn again. Just spawn a shadow beast. Just spawn a shadow beast, pretty much. But you see there that it has basically its own gravitational pull, so you don't really have to worry about missing that much. It's also interesting that if you attack, you can actually throw the soul at um, one of the creatures, and it will hurt it because since it's a source of light. But um, I throw it, and I think the floor master is going to come back to life. Yeah, there we go. So this is where I was honestly kind of tensing up because I haven't done this in a while. And, uh, yeah, this is where I was actually getting really nervous. This one isn't that bad. The next room is somewhat obnoxious with how you have to handle the soul. Honestly, this is the worst part of the dungeon for me because there is another annoying gimmick that this dungeon has, but it's not as bad as the soul gimmick just because it's kind of like an escort mission. I do like the graphic of the soul also, by the way. And, I, and yeah, you can skip those cutscenes because I'm just like, okay, I had enough of this, so I just decided to skip the cutscene at that point. Um, be careful, by the way, when you're... Uh, dragging the soul. Be careful when you're bringing the soul into those clouds of darkness, because if you do, and transform into a wolf, you are basically shit out of luck. Because, um, you have to wait for the floor master to go grab the soul, because there's no way for you to pick up the soul as a wolf, and you have to wait for yourself to transform again. Uh, yeah, so I was bringing the soul over there pretty much, because you notice the, um, the silhouettes of the platforms on the floor, right? Well, we, even though we have the soul with us, those platforms won't activate until we have the dungeon item, so we have to wait on that anyway. But, grab the soul, and we made it out once again. We now have both souls. By the way, for those of you who don't know, soul is Spanish for sun, so that's, that's the deep meaning behind um, the word, pretty much. Now we restore this guy the moment that we exit. That 
it's still really creepy, by the way. I'm sorry. I like the Palace of Twilight, and I really wish we saw more of the Twilight world besides it. what happened when it engulfed our world, but jeez, the people here are creepy. Light has filled the Master Sword. Its blade glows with the golden light from the Twilight Realm. With it, you can cut the dark fog. Amazing. The power of the souls has been transferred to your sword. The guardian deities of my world are on your side, too. You really are the Chosen One, Link. A true hero. As long as you have that sword, you should be able to repel the shadow Xantus spread. So yeah, we basically have a pocket soul with us at this point, because now the dungeon item is the Light Sword. And it's uh, essentially completely useless outside this dungeon because um, you're not going to be using this thing outside of um, you're not going to be using this thing outside of um, the Palace of Twilight. <laughs> Just letting you know that right now. And so, by the way, now that we have that, we essentially can now open up the um, the way to those two treasure chests. Ignore that. That's my Wii U in the background. Uh, sorry about that. But yeah, every time you cut through the uh, the fog of darkness, pretty much, now we open up a path to um, open up different things. We no longer need the soul with us because this is our second piece of heart. And <laughs> yeah, I know. I broke the tension, by the way. But um, yeah, now we can essentially open up the um, any pathway to us now that we have the sword. All we have to do is just sli slice away. This doesn't get rid of the dark clouds forever, though, so you do have to be careful about that. So, a purple rupee, and we're filling up on money completely, even though at this point in the game we frankly don't need rupees. But, uh, yeah, I'll meet you guys back out at the entrance, because we got what we needed. Back out of the entrance. One thing that's interesting to note, too, is the fact that now that we have the light sword, um, there were other, um, twilight, um, inhabitants out here. They're automatically restored now that we have, uh, the light sword out. But, yeah, pretty much, now we just have to go over here, and destroy these things, which they were kind of just asking for, really. But we've reached the uh, main sector of the Palace of Twilight, so I will see you guys in the next episode while we climb up even further. See you guys then.